I believe that this is God's word from cover to cover, without apologies, without a doubt. And I believe that man gets into a mess and man has his life begin to fall apart in one way or the other when we get away from God's handbook, God's manual, God's commands. And that's what's happening all around us. Now, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes we're going to hear things. The further the world gets away from God, and we slowly, I mean, it's happening more and more. Even things that were just like, well, duh, things before, the world is accepted. And it's simply because we've gotten away from God. The more we drift from God, the more man does that which was right in his own eyes. We see that repeated through history. We see that repeated through the Bible over and over again. Man drifts from God, and man does that which is right in his own eyes, and man ends up in a mess. Man ends up falling into sin and causing problems. So today, I am going to address something that is straight out of Scripture, but I believe this world has really twisted this around and not understood this. So what I need to do... I'm going to hit on some things this morning that you're going to sit there and scratch the back of your head and say, wait a minute, and you're going to have questions, but you've got to let me do the second part of this next week. Because I'm going to talk today on the role of a man. And I'm entitled this, It's Time to Man Up. Okay, it's time to man up. God said, and God created man from the beginning and said, dude, this is what I created you to do. And when we drift from that, men end up in a mess, not fulfilling their role as fathers, leaders, pastors, husbands, or whatever it might be. But along the way, I'm going to be talking directly to men, and women are going to sit back and go, wait a minute, what's he saying about us through that? Or what's he trying to imply? I'm not trying to imply anything. I'm not trying to skip over you or step over you or or, or belittle you or anything. So I'm I'm going to dive right in this towards the heart of men. And next week, we're going to open up the the, the next part of this and talk about Eve. So we're going to talk about Adam and Eve with both of these. So take God's holy word and turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Now, we started the year out last week by going back to the beginning, and we're laying out this foundation. Questions that the world asks. Why am I here? What, What am I here for? What is my purpose? Why do I exist And God created man, and here it is, for his pleasure. God purposely handpicked, hand-designed every aspect of us on purpose. So so if you're ugly, God made you ugly on purpose. I I hate to put it that way. You, You might be upset about that. I'm just... And I'm, you don't get mad at your mom and dad. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And everything that God said, said, and it is, what's the word? Good. God said it. God, God made man in his timing, in his way, and he stood back and said, hey, it's good. I did this on purpose, my way, and it is good. We were created in his image, in his likeness, created to love, to fall in love, to respond to love. To express joy, to, to be created to be jealous and, and to laugh and to cry. And we see these attributes even in scriptures through Jesus and through the attributes of God. I enjoy doing premarital counseling. You know where I start with all my premarital counseling? The first time that they meet, I, I first go through their testimony. I, I want to know because I've, I've got, you're talking about the Bible, I've got something that God told me not to do. Not to put two une- not to unequally yoke people together that are unbelievers. I, I am not to take a lost person, a sane person, and bring them together and stand on the stage and do it. And people have gotten upset at me. So when I start with premarital counseling, I, I don't say, are you saved? I want to know your testimony. I, I, I want you to tell me from your heart. And I'll tell you, just, just for the record across the board, when I have people that come to me and I can tell that one's not saved to the other, I'm not looking for a cookie-cut answer. I'm looking for a passionate response from their testimony. I don't do it. You say, why is it? You're narrow-minded, you're old-fashioned. No, I'm trying to be biblical. And the other thing that I do is I take them back to the beginning and say, let me, let me show you when God created man and God created woman, why God created both of you and what your purpose was and what your role was. We've, we've got two more weeks after this that we're going to keep going through this. And so there's some things to understand in this passage to point out. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his image, in his own image, and in the, in the image of God created him. Now I'm going to point out something. You need to understand this. Male and female created he them. He made two different types of people, male and female. And male 
and female are not the same. I can't believe I have to say this. I I can't believe that I thought I'm going to get up and preach on something that in 2014 is almost controversial. That there are boys and there are girls. And, 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 And you go to the doctor and when the baby is born, or the hospital, and the baby's born, they put a blue tag or, or, or a pink tag on that thing and say it's a boy or a girl. Today it would be like, that's not up to you to say that. You know, it's, okay, there's some science behind that, and I'm not going into it, but there is a difference. In chapter 2, God breaks it down even more. And so chapter 1, he gets in, in, in day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, they follow all the way through day 7. And then he starts over and he says, let me explain this creation of man stuff that I, I just told you about. And let me say, we find out from scriptures that we were not created at the same time. The same day, but not at the same time. And I'll prove this from scripture, okay? I want to get into this. We were not created in the same way. I'll prove that from scripture in here because God was making a difference all the way through scripture of making this. Men are different than women. Trust me. Men, how they think, how they act, how they dress, how they respond is different than a woman. And God made them that way. I'm going to give you an illustration. Do any of you women know what the store is named Target? It's a store. For men, it's some place you go to get something. For women, it's an activity. I, I don't understand. I, I so don't understand. My wife went out of town, and I was watching the kids, and, and Logan's shoes were all messed up. So I said, we're going to go buy you a pair of shoes. You know how I buy shoes? I buy shoes the daddy way. That's how I buy shoes. We knock it out. That's how we do. We pull up in Target, and I said, we're not walking through aisles. We're going to go to the shoe department. We're going to pick out shoes. You're going to try on shoes. We're going to buy shoes, and we're going to leave Target. That's what we do, all right? So I get in there, and I assign responsibilities to my kids. Jordan, you go through all these boys' shoes, and I want you to pull out every size 8 that you can find and line them up. Logan's sitting there, Morgan's sitting there preparing the shoes. Boom, 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 boom. Out. That's what we did. We knocked it out. My wife will call me and say, I'm going to Target. What do you need to buy? Nothing. Then why are you going to Target? Because I'm meeting so-and-so at Target. For what? Nothing. We're just going to walk around. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Guys, don't try to figure them out. You will never figure them out. You cannot. Because God created males and God created females. He even, he, it was so complicated that God had to put Adam asleep because he said, dude, you will never understand what I'm about to do. It's better that you sleep through the whole process. I'm telling you. Because we would be sitting there, what are you doing that for? Why? God says, no, you go to sleep. I'll take care of this. And then man was like, whoa, man. It's like, that's awesome. But God did that. We're getting to that. And it will be one of the most unique messages I've ever preached at Fellowship Baptist Church. Do not miss that Sunday. I promise we're getting there. But we have to preach on women next week too. And that that could get complicated. (laughs) We get dressed for church. I'm done with this. But I grab, sometimes I don't even look. I just grab a suit off the thing. And Jen will turn to me and she goes, you just wore that last week. And I said, but here's the thing. If I don't remember that, nobody else is going to remember that. And I'll I'll try to get back at her, and I'll turn around and say, when's the last time you wore that? She said, I wore it six weeks ago on Sunday morning, and I sang this song. I'm like, us guys, we don't care about details like that. God deliberately, on purpose, in order to create balance and harmony and uniqueness and diversity, and complications, <laughs> God created men and women differently. And you say, wow, well, man, where's he going with this? I know, I know. <laughs> For the record, I am not saying that men were created better than women. And if you think that, then you have a problem with Scripture. I am not saying that men are more important than women. And I am not saying that men are superior to women. 
In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. And if you try to sit there and create this feminist slash, you know, all the other terms that we use for a, a guy that puts himself over somebody else, you say, well, what, what is this whole submit to your husband, all this other stuff? Man, do you know what we, we often leave out is the fact that Christ loved us so much that he sacrificed, became, took on the form of a servant to demonstrate his love towards the church or the bride of Christ. Once you think about that next time you big shot try to sit there and push around your wife like you're some sort of something, it's not a matter of you being a big shot. It's a matter of you being more of a servant than a big shot. We'll get into that. I promise we're going to get into all that. You know why? Because we've gotten away from these things. As basic and as simple as these things sound, we've gotten away from it. So I'm not going to take you back to anything but Genesis and God's word and what God said about these things. God had a design when he was doing this. And I fear today, and you, you'll agree with this, I'm sure most of you agree, well, we've got a problem today that we try to feminize young men. It, it, they weren't made by God to sit there and try to figure out who they are. If they're trying to figure out who they are when it comes to being a boy or a girl, some dad or mom didn't do their job right. Don't get quiet on me. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. Either we believe God's word or we don't. It's either all right or it's not. And, and if we're not doing our jobs to teach them, and I'm going to tell you, we, we, I, I went into the doctor's office. No joke. And it said male, female, or other. What's the other? And I'm sitting there going, Wow. Anyways, you know my email address. If you got questions, email it. <laughs> but all this, I want you to know that God is teaching men that they ought to teach their boys God's plan for being a man, God's way, their role as a leader, their role as a father. And don't feminize your sons. Teach them to act like men. Teach them to dress like men. If, if someone comes out behind you and they cannot figure out if you're a boy or a girl, something is wrong. You turn around and say, I, 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 there's styles in this. I'm not going to get on that. But the Bible makes a very distinction that, that, that we, men know us by outward appearance of what resembles a man and what resembles a woman. Trust me, when it comes to me personally, I don't want anybody to mistake me for a chick. I don't have the hairstyle, do I? I was, it's chick offensive. I need to delete that from the CD, please. <laughs> we mess up things when we get away from God's instruction manual for mankind, which is God's word. And let me say, this goes for Christians as well. I don't want you getting upset as I get into this and go, oh, no. Trust me, we either apply ourselves to this or we mess ourselves up. That's our options. My goal is not to hurt anyone, but the truth must be told. And I think that we've gotten afraid of telling the truth because we're afraid of hurting people. But the truth of the matter is we hurt people when we don't tell the truth. That's when we hurt people. So I want, I want to start from the beginning and show you this. God handmade men from the dust of the ground. And I'm kind of reiterating what we did last week. And I, I told you about... and and. And about Elohim and Jehovah, two names brought together, the personal interaction of God. And God formed man out of the dust of the ground and, and basically came out with this dude of dirt. That's, that's what was going on here. From the beginning, man was nothing more than a dirt bag. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not just saying that, I'm, I'm telling you what the scriptures say. And some of you probably still call your husbands that, but that's message number four, come back for that one. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But God did that at a different time than he made Eve, and he did that on purpose. Everything that God did was on purpose. Every detail of his order and his procedure of God crea God's creation was on purpose. Now let me point out something, and we're going to get into this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. I want you to see this. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew... For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. 
Now I want to point out something. There was no curse at this point. There was no man to fall. There was none of that that was created yet at this point of what God was saying. He said there was no man to till the ground. He said, why are you pointing that out? I want you to get this. From the beginning, God had preordained and preplanned to give men responsibilities. God had planned. Sometimes we almost twist this around and say, man fell into sin and God said, as a result, I'm going to make you work. You know, that's not the way that it worked. <clears throat> God had planned before that. And I'm, I'm getting into this. So here's what we learned from the scriptures. We're going to go through and knock out these points this morning. That's how we do it. That's how those guys do it, right? Knock it out. We're going to knock it out. Number one, we need to man up to our responsibilities. Look at verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. The Bible states very clearly that man and women were created, and I'm pointing this out, together on the sixth day. Now, I know this was a long day, and even this is up for debate. And people argue that this day was a long period of time. Okay? First of all, let me point out, God spoke everything into existence. He didn't need more than a day, first of all. God wasn't hindered or limited in any way whatsoever. God said, let there be light. And you know what the following verses says? And there was. It doesn't say, and one by one there was a bang, and the bang exploded into this. And da, 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 no. The Bible says, and God said, and it was so. Just like that. The other thing that I want to point out of this, and you're saying, well, I don't believe this all happened in a day. Then explain to me why verse 31 says, in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay, and the Bible gets in and explains it. You say, why am I saying this? I want to make it very clear that God created Adam and Eve on the same day, but he did it at separate times of the day. And you say, why is that so important? I mean, I'm going to do the rest of the message. I'm going to lay that out to show you as we, do, as we break apart the scripture. Uh, the scripture. Every animal that God created, he created in pairs. Everything, And he said, male and female created he them. But when he created man, he did not do it that way. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man before Eve and put him in the garden to do this, to dress it and to keep it. God himself created man, picked him up. If you play we, it's kind of like that little thing where they take the characters, picked him up. Brought them over and dropped them in and said, that's your place, this is your role. That's your place, I'm going to put you where I want you to put you, and I'm going to have you do what I created you to do, to dress it and to keep it. The word dress or the phrase dress it means this, it's a primitive word, means to work. By implication to serve, to till, to labor, serving to become, or the word servants. That's what the word means. Now let me remind you, there was no sin yet in creation. Here's the points that I want to point out. Man has a responsibility to work and to provide. God made man and placed him where he wanted them to be and gave him a job. And here we've got to understand, you say, why is that so important? Because we're losing this. Here God was giving him the direction. You say, why? Let me explain this. He was created in the likeness of God. We established that he was created in the image of God. I'm going to take you back and show you something about God. And I'm, I'm, we're going to read a passage, and I want you guys to fill in the blank to prove a point. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Now we're going to talk about God. It said he was created in the image of God to do what God does. Now notice this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. There was a goal. There was a job. There was a task however you want to put it, that was put behind it, were finished, and the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his, what's the word? Work. God ended his work, which he made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his, what's the word? Work, which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his which God had created and made. You know what God was doing? God was designing 
putting effort into creating and providing for the needs of us. That's what God did. Uh, and, and you say, work and made and planned and finished and all this. I thought God just spoke in existence and did all this. I'm telling you, God was even through this, set an example and showing us what our purpose and design was. How incredible is that? God said in verse two, first, uh, chapter 2, verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man of saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. What were they doing? God said, you know, I'm going to give you a job and responsibility, and you're going to be able to eat for your provision. But Adam, I'm going to tell you right now, in order to eat from the provision, you're going to have to dress it and keep it. I'm going to give you a job, and through this job, you're going to be able to eat. You say, wow, you're, you're really going basic. Isn't that an incredible concept? If a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. Meaning that God didn't come down and pluck the apples and say, it's time to eat, here you go. Here, take a little bite here. Eddie. You know, God didn't do that. And here today in our society, we almost have gotten away from that concept. If a man doesn't work, you're not going to eat. So what am I going to do? You're going to have to get a job. God instituted the concept of work for our provision. God's plan was very clear. Let me, let me take you to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. You don't have to turn there for the sake of time. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Let, let, let me tell dads here. You know what we need to teach our sons? There is more to life than Facebook and video games. Life is not about the government sitting there to give you everything you need. Life is about sweating and calluses. And you say, what do you mean? You're being no, and, and, and what by that, I'm, there's a variety of jobs and talents and everything, and I'm not saying that, but I'm saying we need to teach our sons the reality of life. See, the thing is, if everybody had the concept that somebody else was going to take care of them, eventually there would be nobody taking care of anybody. And that's, that we're, we're headed that direction now. That the more people that sit back and say, I'm so used to somebody else providing for me or whatever, then they don't do it. Well, eventually those people are going to die out. And there's not going to be anybody there to hand down the handouts. You say, wow, I can't believe you're getting on this. Well, it's Bible. It's absolutely Bible. It was God's plan for man to keep man on track. I, I, I believe that God placed man and created him to be like him to accomplish, to achieve, to strive, to push forward, to display efforts to have a plan and goals that were set before him and that those things would be accomplished when Jesus, when God himself, I had a job, I did it, I worked, I rested, and it was done. God did that. And then God created man and said, I'm going to create you in my image, in my likeness. And then God gave him a job and did that. And then we come away from that concept and get confused. We need to live and understand teaching a truth like this. One day my little girl is going to meet a boy She'll probably be around 28 or 30. <laughs> and that's if, I'm a, if, if I compromise on my convictions right now. And, and I'm going to interview that jerk that wants to marry my little girl. So you don't even know him yet. I know, I know. There's not a boy out there that's good enough for my little girl. And you know what I want to ask him? And you might say this is unfair. I want to ask him, son, where do you work? And do you have a job? Because you are not going to have me at no altar give away my little girl that's not planning on taking care of her. It's not going to happen. It, it's not just a matter of teaching them, and this is one of those things that I pause, to win, women getting in there and saying, I'm a single mom, and I'm saying, I, I, trust me, I take my hat off, I love you, appreciate you, and, and all those things. I am not dare sitting there trying to say that you have to have some man, and if you don't, and all that other stuff, I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that there ought to be an example where God says to our sons to get a job, to work, be faithful, consistent, and provide. Needs to be. And let me say why I'm saying this. I'm not speaking to those that are retired, disabled, or those that are out seeking for a job. And you said, man, I went to church and you just beat me up and I'm out of work and I'm not. May God bless you and help you and all of that. God knows your heart. Amen. God knows your heart. 
And what is your heart? That I'm, I'm, that what I, I'm asking you through all of this. But I'm trying to simply say that life is not about handouts. God gave man responsibility to work. Let me show you another one. That God gave us responsibility to protect. So you skipped a word. I know I did it on purpose. Genesis 2.15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The word keep here means to hedge about, to guard, generally to protect, attend to, etc. And I started thinking about it. God, God gave them all that. And, I'm, I, and maybe I'm wrong on this. And I'm going to be, not all pastors are willing to do this. Sometimes I'm going to be transparent. I said, Lord, what does that mean in this passage here to guard, to protect, or whatever? There was no enemies. There was no even sin and all those other things to corrupt. There was no thorns at the time. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't all those things. And God still gave the instructions of this at the beginning. And you got to remember, God created man first. God placed him in the garden. And God told him what to do and what not to do. And then God gave him the responsibilities to dress and keep it. Then God created the woman and brought him into his life. And then we have family that comes after that. There is an order and events that transpires through this thing. Okay, it's really cool. There's an order of an events that God did this. In verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, listen to this, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. I, I need to point out something. God, before Eve was ever on the picture, God gave the commandment of what they could and could not do. God gave the commandment of what they could and could not do to Adam. And God did that on purpose. God was creating a chain uh, of accountability that we can see here in Scripture. And God told him, he said, man, he said, in the tree, there's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, there, the, and, and God said, and said, I do not want you to touch it. And I honestly believe when God said, to dress it and to keep it, what God was doing through this passage was saying, I'm going to give the instructions and I want you to protect your family. I'll tell you, guys, you, you've not only got a, a, a responsibility to, to work, you've got a responsibility to protect. Do, do you realize that we, God, placed Adam there and gave him all these responsibilities before they were ever brought on the picture. And God said, this is what I want you to do. Before Eve is ever created, before Cain and Abel ever step on the scene, before any of these things, Adam, you have a responsibility to take care of them and to protect them. Which leads me to my next point. Number one, man up to your responsibilities. But number two, man up to God's regulations. At that point, God sat down and God said, this is what is right and this is what is wrong. Not man, this is what God said. This is what I'll allow you to do and this is what will hurt you. After God gave man his responsibilities, he also clarified to him what he could and could not do when they were in the garden. Man was not able to just do whatever he wanted. God set up rules to follow for the purpose of protecting them. As we get into this, did you notice that through the story of the gospel right here, through the story of the scripture right here, that God created Adam and he sat him there and he did this. And nowhere in the scriptures do I find that God did the same thing for Eve. And I thought, was that God's chain of command of teaching and saying, hey, Adam, I'm going to teach you this and I want you to pass it on and teach it to those that I put under your influence or your leadership. God gave the instruction to him. If we were to read in the Bible and going on, let me explain the order of this. Now, this is, this is where some of you are going to be like, I don't believe that. Well, I'm reading scripture here. Allow me to explain this order. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and let me read this to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. This is God given to man, woman, children, and society an order of accountability. God instructed the man, and the man was to instruct his wife. I can show you that many, many, many illustrations, especially in the New Testament. We know that Eve ate of the tree. We know that Adam followed and ate as well. We know that. It's one of those things we teach in Sunday school. We know that they fell in sin. 
But who was the one that took the, the blame for the fall? Who was the one that was held accountable for the fall? Let me take you again to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of death. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You say, wow. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought if sin, sin was introduced to the world, and the Bible clearly says in Genesis that Eve was the first one to bite of the fruit, then why in the world in the New Testament is it saying that by Adam all man fell? Well, let me take you back again. We're going to get back in here. Notice what happens. Adam and Eve sin. They rebel against God. God says the two shall be one flesh. We'll get into that and explain that. And that will tie in a lot of the Eve sin first and Adam sin as well. But let me remind you, they are one flesh. As one flesh, this is what happens. They ran and they hid themselves. One of them decided, hey, we need to cover ourselves. If God comes in here, he's going to know we're naked. So they sew fig leaves together. They try to cover up their sin. Now notice what happens. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, they were together. And let me say, for the record, God knew they were together. Hid themselves from the presence of, of the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Say, I don't understand where you're going with this. This was God's order of accountability. You have God created everything. God creates man. God spends time with man. God teaches him responsibility. God teaches him what is right and wrong. God puts him to sleep, goes get the woman, brings woman into his life. Then Adam and Eve sin. Adam is accused and even labeled in the New Testament as the one that fell or brought sin into the world because they were one flesh and God held him accountable to lead his family. It is not a matter of men being greater than women. It's not a matter of one being greater than the other. I am not talking about who makes more money. I'm not talking about who's got the bigger degree. I'm not talking about the one that's been saved. I'm not talking about longer. I'm not talking about the one that is older in the relationship. I am not talking. I'm not talking all of those things that at this point in our minds we're trying to read into it. It is not those things. In our world, we understand this. In our nation, we have a president. In an army, they have a general. In a company, they have a CEO. Do you know what it is? In every system of things that are governed, somebody has to be the one that is held responsible. It wasn't a matter of God saying, Adam, I'm going to create you and you're going to boss your wife around. If anything, God created Eve and brought her into his life and said, now you have a helpmate. It is not good that man should be alone. I will create something that will fulfill your life, not something for you to boss around. And then God created this incredible unity and harmony through them. I love all of my kids. I love Jordan. I love Logan. And I love Morgan. This past week I had a great illustration of leaving the house and leaving my three kids there while I ran to do something. Before I left, I go up to my kids and I said, Jordan, I am leaving. I do not want you doing this. I do not want you doing that. If this happens, you call me. If this happens, it was funny. They, they were supposed to clean and Jordan sends me a text message of nine pictures of every room of the house for me to approve if they've properly done their job so he could go have my authority to go back and correct his brother and sister. It's just, I was impressed. But, uh, <laughs> but the, whole, the, the, whole, the whole thing that I, I do with my kids, I love them. I come home and something's broken. Jordan, what happened? Oh, my goodness, you like Jordan more than the others. That's not how Jordan's looking at it. Oh, Dad, I'm your favorite. I'm better than the other ones. 
He said, their dad, I tried to tell them. They wouldn't listen. I held him accountable. And you see, the thing is, if there's two heads to anything, what do we call something with two heads? It's a monster. And God said, I cannot have a home, and I cannot have it where I'm telling you to do this and not do this and whatever, and there not be a head like there is to the church, like there is to a nation, like there is to an army, like there is to a company or anything else, without God calling somebody out on the carpet of did they hold to their responsibility. And it was God, and it was his plan. And it was his order. And let me tell you, it wasn't because God was doing that to put women down on another level. It was God's way of protecting women to understand, for men to understand their, how valuable they are. And I, I want to come back. Please come back next week. And please come back and let me fill in the blanks of this. But let me tell you, today this gets so twisted. Man uses his role as a leader to push his wife around a man that abuses his wife or misuses his leadership in any way is a jerk, not a leader. Warning to men today. The same way that God called out Adam in the garden for the sin of his family is the same way that God calls and holds men accountable today for their families. God's order and God's plan has not changed. You're sitting there and say, I'm the husband, I'm this, I'm that. God sits there and says, I've given you regulations. I've told you what is right and wrong. I have told you what I should not be and should not or should be in your house. And God calls you out and says, are you being the leader that I've called you to be? It's time, men, to man up to God's responsibilities and God's regulations that he's put into our lives. You say, I have no control. I don't do this or that. I, we've got to be more like Joshua. Where Joshua stood before the people and everybody's running in any direction. And the world around him, even the Christians... The God followers of that time, of that day, were going after the false gods. And do you know what he said? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. There was only so much he could do with the influence of that, but he did make a decision. As for my roof, my home, my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So why don't we have the results and things that we need to in this day and age because we don't have men manning up to their responsibilities. To understand that God plays you. Let me close with the one last point and we'll be done. You, some of you are going to sit there and say, man, I wish my husband would man up and, 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 and protect us by understanding God's boundaries. I, I wish my husband, I wish my husband was better at the responsibilities of providing and protecting us in our home to, 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 to keep our home and those things. I wish let me tell you the key to all of this. And none of this, none of it will ever work without this final point. Last part, man needs to man up to your relationships. Follow God's order one more time. And I know I keep reiterating this, but remember, God created male and female, male and female. And then on this day, God created man and woman separately says in chapter 1, on the sixth day. So I believe with all my heart, it was on the sixth day that he created Adam and Eve. But on that day, there was a lot that went on, and God deliberately did it separate. There was, there was, a, there was a gap between them. Eve was created by putting uh, Adam to sleep and taking the bone and putting it into Adam. Adam was created by breathing into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Two different things that was going on here and a gap of current events between them. And I look at that and I think, what was God doing? Notice that what God was doing. God creates man without the woman, and God spends time with Adam. God taught him, God gave him instructions, and God placed him where he wanted to be. And when God said, and when God said it is not good, then at that point, God goes and brings woman into his life. Let me tell you guys, as simple as this is, your relationship with your wife or your children or your spouse or whoever that significant other is in your life will never be right if you don't first start with your relationship with God. Straight from God's word, straight from scripture. God said, I know I'm going to raise them up to be husband and wife, but Adam, you need to spend this time here first before you ever spend that time over there with her. It's amazing how God does everything perfect. 
And it's amazing how we'll read these passages all the way back in Genesis and we'll sit there and think, or say, oh, God created woman and created the rib and it's more than just a flannel graph story to tell in Sunday school. It was God setting an order and God's establishing every aspect of this on purpose. So let me ask you guys, are you the man that God wants you to be? Are, are you manning up to the responsibilities that God's clearly placed in our lives? Do you lead and protect your family? Do you go by the boundaries that God has set? Do you know God's word enough to sit there and say, hey guys, this is what God said, and for me and my house, we're going to do what's right when it comes to our house. And if that is wrong, I'm going to tell you it's wrong. And if that is right, I'm going to lift it up. And being faithful to church and being faithful to your mom and being faithful to what God says, I'm going to do it. Because that's how we raise young men to follow God. We lead by example. God gave us, or gave Cain and Abel a father to figure, to follow. And if we don't give the examples, our children will fall on their faces time after time. So important.